video walk on Heartland Pioneer Trailblazer. We'll start in the back. 30 amp short cord. This is your short cord. It'll be with the unit when you get it. They're about 25, 30 feet long. Bumper caps come off. It's going to be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. Stabilizer jacks, all four corners. There is a crank for those. You can use a uh, three quarter inch socket on a drill with an adapter, and that works just fine. Just if you do it that way, you're going to lubricate them a little bit more often. You should always lubricate them. There's a threaded rod that goes through the middle of it. Keep that lubricated. If you're going to run it with a drill, lubricate it more often. Dump, dump area for your gray on the left, black on the right. Your black is your toilet water, your gray is everything else. Always make sure your valves are closed like that before you take this cap off. Then I recommend doing your black tank first, then your gray. That'll flush out the hose before you carry it and put it in your bumper. Yeah. Looking for your drain for your fresh tank right there. That one in the back, that's your drain for your fresh. This is where you fill your fresh. You set your hose in there, don't jam it in there. And monitor its progress from the inside monitoring pender as you're filling it. Right below that is the city water connection. So you can hook up a water and run off your city water pressure. If you're using your onboard tank, you use your pump. And then I did gloss over something over here. You have a cable inlet right above the storage compartment. So if you're going somewhere that provides cable, you can hook it up through there. Back over here. Water heater, super simple. When you're ready to use it, just throw your anode rod in that hole. Get it threaded by hand. Inch and a sixteenth is the socket size. Get it tight, but not too tight so it, so it doesn't leak. As soon as you hook up water to it, it'll automatically start filling. And then you'll be able to, go to turn it on, on on the inside. Now, if you are going to use an electric, there is a button inside to turn it on. There's also a switch outside here that needs to be on. So right now it's set to off. So keep that in mind. And then other than that, before you folks drain it, and I recommend draining it after every trip, you don't want water to sit in there, it'll get stagnant. Pull your pressure relief, let all the water come out once it stops coming out, snap it closed, and then take your plug out. And then make sure you clean in there and in here. Keeping it clean is a is good key to having it last a long time. Pass through storage right here, it goes all the way to the back. There's your manual crank. For these jacks right there right up here a lot of good information for you got your van tire pressure 65 psi tire size and cargo carrying capacity got yourself a group 24 rv marine grade battery uh, there's going to be a long time between trips i recommend disconnecting your negative lead off the battery and if it's in the winter i recommend taking your battery completely out storing it somewhere warmer than it is outside single 20 pound cylinder Super simple to use, on, all the way to the left is on, all the way to the right is off. Manual crank, you can up, up, upgrade to a power tongue jack if you choose in the future. As for now, it's just manual. Seven way, this will get hooked with your truck, as well as your chains and your breakaway, which goes to this box. So if your truck would ever come on a hutch from the camper, pulls the pin out of the box, activates the brakes. Other side of that storage access to that crank vents for your fridge those are just for airflow just like all your other appliances outside keep them clean in here clean open here even if you wanted to you could pop these off just give these a quarter of a turn pop the cover off you'll be able to clean back there outdoor outlet it's gfci protected all your gfcis are on the same circuit if one would have trip they're all going to trip Got your range vent, exterior range vent with this flap open. That's how you want it when you're using it, but when you're storing it or when you're traveling, snap it closed. When they're new, they're really they're really finicky to get them in and out. But as you use them, the plastic kind of stretches and gets used to getting put in the hole. Just like that. Exhaust for your furnace, don't block it. They make screens for these. Um, they don't recommend you running them with the screens on, but as far as like storage or travel, that's good to keep the insects and debris out of there. Then a few more things. All your sealant on the outside is warrantied through us for 90 days. After 90 days, it's on you folks to take care of it. I'd go a couple times a year and just look at it. If you see something, spot seal it. Then your roof, there is no ladder, so it's not a walkable roof. 
but I do recommend getting like a folding ladder like that and checking on your roof. Um, if you see any gaps in your sealant and you want to fix it yourself, keep your receipts if you bought the sealant. Take before and after pictures, that way you can keep record because the only way to keep your warranty on your roof is proof of regular maintenance. All right, ready to go on the inside now. Got your controls for your awning here. Your awning does not stop when it's automatically out. When you see the bare tube like that, that's all the way out. They are adjustable for pitch. So all you do is these little metal detents on each side, pinch them close, and then you would grab here, pull it down as you're pinching it. You can adjust it. You see you have some adjustability right there. So you can have one end pitched down, so if it's raining, you can have water come off on the side rather than all the way along the edge. If there is a big storm, big gust of wind, roll your awning in. You don't want to risk it, have the wind break an awning arm or tear the fabric or anything like that. And if you roll it in wet, as soon as it starts to get sunny and dry out, roll it back out. Let the uh, let it get dried off, because you don't want it rolled up with retaining moisture. Um, you'll get like black streaks, not black streaks, but like green mildewy streaks on the inside of it, and you don't want that. You do have awning lights, as you see up there, and those are controlled via this switch right here. Oh, wait, sorry. This switch right here on the left is for your interior lights. The one on your the right, this one right here, does your awning lights. Then you have your resettable GFCI outlet. So if any of your GFCIs were to trip, this is the outlet you come and reset it at. Bunk area, not a whole heck of a lot going on. You have an emergency exit right here. Super simple to use. Lift this up, push it out. You can have it like a regular window like that. Or you'd push it all the way out, grab the screen here, pull it off, and then jump out the window. Light above the bunk there too. And then an outlet next to the bunk. Spot right here, mounted TV. So if you wanted to screw it to this where you could see there's a stud here, you could do it there. Or I'd recommend this side cabinet right here. Um, and then you hook it power here, and then you can hook your coax there. If you're using cable, make sure this is off. If you're using your antenna, make sure it's on. Smoke alarm right there. Carbon monoxide alarm right there. Um, they both use 9-volt batteries, so if they start getting you low-voltage chirps, it's time to replace the batteries. That This turns into a bed. All you do is pop them legs up, lower the table, and rest it on these shelves right here. Take the back cushions, lay them flat on it, and you have a nice sleeping area. Fridge, super simple. Lift this cover up. You have access to on or off. This, this is off, this is on. Auto or gas. Just recommend leaving on auto. Auto is going to default to 110, so if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. If you were to lose power, it's going to switch automatically to running off of propane if your gas were to be on. Thermostat for your furnace, super simple. All you do is slide that over like that. Then you can adjust your temperature down here. And then all the heat comes out of there. And trust me, that's enough to get this thing hot as heck in here. A little cubby storage up here. And then you have a radio. Push and hold the power, turn the radio on. This is your volume adjustment. Scan through your channels here. Band and mute. If you hold band, it says zone one. Push and hold. Turns zone one off. So now it's just the outside speakers. And that works vice versa, so you can have zone 2 off and just zone 1 on. You can have them both off, you can have them both on. The USB, uh, auxiliary, and you have modes here, you can cycle through modes, you can play your phone to it via Bluetooth and listen to your own music if you'd like to. Below the thermostat, for your furnace, you got two USB outlets. AC is controlled by your knobs, so all the black is just going to be fan. It's just going to run the fan, not the actual AC. If you turn it to the blue part, it'll turn the AC portion of it on. It says optional heat. It doesn't have heat. So the red right here just means that's the warmest the AC will be. And this will be the, and that's the coldest the AC will be. 
If you want it all dump out right here, have this open. If you want to have it on the edges, like here and here, and on all four corners, close them and it'll divert it out the edges. Looking for. Oh, yeah. Ha ha. Blue book. It's going to have all your manuals in it. So it doesn't hurt to look through that. Let's see if I can't get it open with. There we go. So it's got, you got all your manuals. Looks like there is an extra sewer cap in here. Yeah. Pretty basic. Anything that was installed in here, there should be a manual for it in there. Yeah. And I always encourage people to go home and just kind of gloss through a few of them. That'll let them, uh, let you, that'll help, uh, help you guys kind of get used to how to work the appliances and all that. Microwave works just like your standard household microwave. Um, it's only going to work when you're plugged in. Range vent, you got your light, your fan. It takes a little while to kick on. You can hear it. There you go. Um, make sure if you're using that, you have that flap open on the outside. Cooktop, super simple. You turn it to here, light it with a lighter, barbecue lighter, match, cigarette lighter, whatever you have to light it. Dual bonk switch is nice with individual lights, so light up there, and then this one has a light. Let's get a light out. Oh, right over there, too. And then I do have a 200 pound weight limit. Coming to the bathroom, shower, very self explanatory. If you want to use it as a shower, lift up here, diverts the water to the shower head. If you're not doing that, it's set in bath, but I don't know many people who are taking baths while camping. Toilet, super simple. If you can see, let's see if we can get a good angle. There's a pedal right here. As long as you're pushing this pedal when you're using it, it's just going to keep flushing. Then you have a light switch in here. It turns on and off the lights. The one on the left turns on and off your fan vent right here. And when you crank this up, That opens it. Make sure you close it before a big rainstorm or before you travel. And then right here, controls to your water pump, water heater on gas, water heater on electric. Like I said, if you turn it on here, that switch outside is off right now, so electric won't work until that switch is turned on. You can run these both at once. If you are going to use electric, make sure there is water in it, or otherwise you get about five minutes before you toast the heating element. Then you can measure, measure how full your battery is. Black, gray, fresh. Like I said, black is toilet, gray is everything else. Your battery is always going to read full when you're plugged in. So if you're plugged in, it's always going to read that it's full. So the best way to read your battery is when you're unplugged. That's pretty much it for the bathroom. We'll give one last scan. That's pretty much it for the interior, too. Alright, and that concludes your video tour of your Heartland Pioneer.